Student debt is now a global problem. Will Hutton writes in London's Observer, the young have always lived for the moment, but now they face a grimmer future than their parents. Some young women are selling their eggs to pay off their credit card debts. Who is a deadbeat in American society? Is it somebody who is least likely to pay their debts? Or is it somebody who's more likely to pay their debts? In credit card speak, I'm considered a deadbeat because I like to pay my whole bill in full every month. They want me to be what they call a revolver, only pay the minimum, and then they can sock me with interest of up to 30%. Wow. Like many customers, sometimes I'm late by a day or two, and boom, that makes me eligible for late charges and penalties. I don't understand, Mr. Money. How can you earn credit? To earn credit, first you have to develop your character. You have to be trustworthy. Today, trust has very little to do with it. What happened to good word or, or uh, trust? Well, you don't have that anymore. You got credit cards. Now if you have bad credit, you can't get a house. And if you don't have a house, you're homeless. And then they blame it on you because you're lazy. That doesn't make any sense. Individual cardholders are up against a giant industry with a well-designed system for maximizing profits, often at the expense of consumers. They wouldn't give it to you for free no. if it was free money. Never. 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 Got free money, but you have to pay. Got free money, but you have to pay. From the sea to the shining sea. Got free money, but you have to pay. Signing up for bankruptcy. Got free money, but you have to pay. Everyone's a card head, blind like a crackhead. They send it in the mail, soon your house is for sale. MasterCard, Visa, pushing the squeeze. You're pre-approved by Amex for credit, scam X. More and more sectors of the American economy recognize that their financial success is based on the success of the credit card industry. This is Wilmington, Delaware. There's a bank on every corner behind me, the headquarters of MBNA. It's a state known for its favorable business climate, for its low taxes, and for its politicians who will do the bidding of the credit card companies. MBNA is now owned by the Bank of America. Fewer and fewer banks, some say 10 in all, dominate 92% of the industry, supplying, get this, 1.5 billion cards worldwide held by 158 million card holders. That averages to 10 cards per person. The banks persuaded Congress to deregulate, leading to consolidation and higher prices. Pro-business court decisions allowed them to base operations in low-tax states like South Dakota and Delaware and end consumer protection against usury. You and I may not fully understand how the credit industry, the card companies, and big banks operate, but they understand us, their customers. Everything here is very clearly thought out and premeditated, whether it's having conferences and think tank sessions about how to encourage people to accept more debt, to work with merchants, for example, to persuade merchants with empirical information that if your average customer pays in cash, that if they use a credit card, they'll buy 20, 25 percent more. Three big companies maintain vast databases on every American. They have more data than the CIA, says computer expert Daniel Gross. The credit card system as a whole is a huge threat to our freedom. But the really great threat isn't so much these corporations as our nonchalance in, in, in the face of the power they have over us. It's our indifference, our negligence, our ignorance that gives them their power and that makes them dangerous to us. Gross showed us how these companies present themselves. This is the home page of the Experian website. Notice how it has all the friendly colors and it's very inviting, happy mom, happy kid, very friendly, non-threatening, and that's the way they want you to feel about the multi-million dollar business they have making money on your information. We hear a lot about identity fraud and credit card scams against individuals, but not about fines and lawsuits against unethical practices by credit card companies, including deceptive advertising and improper fees. These credit bureau practices were riddled with abuses too. They've now simplified their products in the way they determine credit scores. Credit score is a number that is uh, calculated uh, differently uh, by each credit reporting agency using a proprietary formula. 
Proprietary is another word for secret, which is how much of the industry operates. It decides on your credit worthiness and can often unilaterally change the agreement it has with you even after you've signed it. I don't bother reading most of the things I sign when I get them from my credit card company. You're a lawyer. Most people have difficulty understanding the uh, amount of paper that your credit card company assaults you with. Multiple pages. The pages are at least 15 in number. The print is very small. And again, this is an example of drafting by a risk-minimizing lawyer. What the big banks and credit card companies understand that most of us don't is that our society has changed fundamentally. Consumer credit drives our economy, but where is it driving us to? Everyone is scrambling to pay their bills. In many states, you can take out a loan using your car title as collateral. We followed these two guys into a title loan store in Delaware. Well, we went in to get a title loan on Eric Penner's automobile here. The book value of this car is probably about $9,000. For your vehicle, the most we'll be able to do, if we can have proof of income, is $1,100. $1,100? Mm -hmm. And then what has to be, then what's... Well, we have an interest of 25%. 25%? It charges a 25% interest for a 30-day loan. So our interest for 30 days came to $296.86, plus charges a $65 processing fee. And they already automatically assumed that we wouldn't be able to pay it back in 30 days, so that only leads you to believe that it's a regular occurring situation. After 60 days, we will be charged an extra 25% on the loan, and then they charge you interest on the interest. $750 of interest. That's a, that's a ridiculous amount of money. You lose a car worth $9,000 for not paying back $1,850 in 60 days. That's, that's the, the decision you have to make. And so many Americans find themselves in, the, in our current economy in a situation where they need to make these decisions and they need to borrow their money. Hi, Mom. Hey. Hey, Gracie. <laughs> my name's Michelle Best. I'm 32. This is my husband, Marcel, and this is our Command Central. We have two kids, um, one job, and a lot of debt. Um, basically, we started out trying with the best of intentions, trying to keep our monthly bills low, and we got this American Express card. We had $15,000 in the bank. Both of us were working, and then... I was completely against the credit card thing from the first. Well, then you quickly... Well, no, no. I, to me, like, you know, just credit cards, you, you want something, you save the money, you buy it. Because you know what happens at the end here. You pay right. them extra money. But it's then like, when you like, go from two kids... And no job, and one job from two jobs and no kids, then you can't afford groceries. You can't afford things like shoes and clothes and things that you need. So I'm at home all the time. He's working, and I have I'm I become in charge of the things we need. I come from an upper middle class family. I'm used to a certain level of income, and when. The money dropped out, and that's where we went, to credit cards. And we started out with this American Express card because he wanted to pay it off. And we lived for about a year in the completely in the black. Always paid it off. Paying it off. Struggling well, sometimes. in the last four years, this has jumped to $16,615, which is $615 over its credit limit, which means that every month we pay $234.41 in finance charges. Just on this one. We have two more. We ha we pay for things like our computer on 18 months, same as cash. We use Christmas tips, whatever, to cover these. We make sure that we don't miss any payments because almost every single offer, if you miss one payment, then you get Boom. all of the interest lopped on. Just waiting for you, just like like floodgates, right? They just attack you right away, you know? Just you miss one, one. Make one mistake, you know? In 2005, the top 10 credit card companies spent over $2 billion on advertising and marketing. 
get, um, these are the offers that we got this week. The DMV's in on it, because now I can pay Most for... Most of these don't even make it up the stairs, because I ripped them up and throw them directly into the trash. Re which they're getting very clever with. They make it so difficult to rip these things up right away. They're, they're I really swear heavy. to God, I don't know what they do to them now, but you can't just rip them. So you got to go like, you know, do this two different ways. important information for Marcel's finances from the company who just gave me my last card. And um, also, my dog at home, Guinness Best, he gets pre-approved for credit cards through my family's Just house. wanted to see if it would happen. Which Your dog? It, my it dog. Happened. It happened. <laughs> Guinness Best, who since died, but... He's, he's very still... <laughs> poor, no pun intended. <laughs> but he still does get pre-approved credit cards in the mail, <clears throat> even having been deceased for a year. My deceased yellow lab, yeah. Guinness. I asked Steve Barnett, who worked on advertising for Citibank's credit card division, about the way the companies market credit cards. American Express discovered that a, a major problem that they had was that their credit card customer was getting older and older. They were not attracting younger people. And so they decided to make a card that would appeal to younger people, the blue card. And in fact, it was successful. Look at the... Um, MasterCard ads. Program in the first. Four dollars. You'll see a MasterCard ad that shows a family going to a baseball game and paying for different for the hot dogs and the tickets and the and you know all this costs a certain amount of money and you can do it with MasterCard. But what is the real meaning of the evening? It's the family together and it is priceless. Now think about that advertisement. This is an advertisement urging spending. And the trick in the advertisement, which is oh so clever, is to say the point of this all is it's priceless. It's really not concerned about money. It's concerned about you as an intact, wonderful, caring family. You know, you as an intact, wonderful, caring family can go uh, to some park and play softball with your kids too. You don't have to spend, you know, $180 to go to a ball game. Bankruptcy lawyer Charles Juntica. People act on those commercials. Those com commercials have real influence. They are, they are done scientifically to get into your unconscious mind. The priceless campaign, which you, you, know, you see in many, many of the MasterCard ads, is brilliant because what they're saying is, this credit card, this, this is not a way to get you in debt. This is not a way to, to cause you to overspend. This is a way to reinforce your values, your deepest beliefs. Their identity is based on their credit cards. Even the color of the plastic that they use now identifies them within a rank order of the credit card nation. Gold, silver, platinum, titanium. Everybody's identity now is what their transaction, whether it goes through, whether it's been accepted, whether it's been rejected. The card itself says something about who you are. So that if now you're a, a senior uh, executive, and you're taking out an American Express green card, there's a perceived disjunction between who you are and what that card is. And the credit card issuer says, wow, that's wonderful. I can issue a platinum card. Well, then the platinum card becomes too widespread. I can issue a black card. Uh, the black card is the extraordinary, super elite card of American Express for people who charge approximately $300,000 a year. Need a pricey watch or an exclusive hotel? American Express even publishes this glossy magazine just for wealthy cardholders. It's chock full of high-priced luxury products. And you can literally have a helicopter and have a private um, shopping spree in Macy's with your personal shopper. And of course, you never have to check and see what the total bill is. It'll all be itemized for you for American Express. P.S. The more fancy and elite a credit card is, the more money is made from, from, from that credit card. After years of getting unwanted, unsolicited credit card solicitations in my mailbox at home, I come to the office and what happens? I'm being spammed to death with more solicitations in my inbox on email. Less than perfect credit will match you with the right lender, in unsecured gold MasterCard credit card. It just doesn't stop. And where are the commercials that say, don't use credit cards. If you use a credit card, pay it off in 30 days, or else you'll pay outlandish interest. Where are those commercials? They don't exist. Something like this? 
making priceless commercials. Tens of millions. Making a 